uh, Lieutenant Colonel, retired U.S. Air Force, and uh, Jack is noted noteworthy because he uh, not only has airplane. Whoops, still don't have control of this thing. Not only uh, the OV-10 that we have here too. So I think. Okay, do we have the sound back? Let me know if we got the sound back. Let me give you a thumbs up if you can hear us. Okay, good. Somehow my phone decided it was going to play music and didn't tell me about that. So It's just these issues we have to deal with here. So uh, we were talking about Dan Haith. Dan Heth. Dan Heth, yeah. yeah. He was a maintenance officer at the beginning of the program. 
went through the testing at Edward, and I went to Upper Hayford and was in maintenance at uh, Hayford. And he has been a big supporter of getting this airplane uh, rehabilitated. Yeah, this, this is the one thing I don't think people realize is the Air Force doesn't help us with these airplanes. Nobody helps us fund these, so we have to get money from the people who the planes are near and dear to their heart. Right. And so that's why each of these airplanes, we refer to them as having an affinity group uh, that, uh, is, uh, uh, that helps us out with the airplanes. And what's the significance of the 009? That's the last three numbers of the tail. Last three, okay. And so what do we call this airplane, though? Well, it's nine. Okay, good. Well, let's keep walking around here and see if there's anything else. Uh, oh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, right here underneath the, uh, by the landing gear. Looks like the landing gear door there. It is the landing gear door. It's also the speed brake. You see the size of that thing. Can you imagine? It's massive. It is massive. It, it created quite a, quite a pitch up uh, when you popped it out at high speed. However, General Dynamics had an auto trim feature built into it so that uh, it compensated for you deploying the speed. Let's, let's let them look inside the wheel well here a little bit. These tires, these main gear tires are really big too. These are bigger than a, most of the airplanes that we have here. They're so big that you can go to full afterburner prior to takeoff put the brakes on. Wow. The aircraft did not move. Wow. There was enough surface. Well, let's, let's look in the uh, intake here, too. Do we have blow-in doors here? These are blow-in doors, sucker doors. On the A model, this whole section of the intake would move forward with hydraulic pistons to let in extra air. That's the okay. big difference between the E model and the A model. So the, the blow-in doors are to, to let more air come into the engines. That's right. And that's At just for speeds, takeoff, right? Low speed, low speed. High okay. Well, let's show them down the intake here. Um, two engines, right? Two turbofans. TF30s. The A and the E produced about 18,000 pounds of thrust per engine in afterburner. The F model, which was the last of the 111 models, produced 25,000 pounds of thrust per engine. So wow. you can see there's quite a difference between this P3 engine and the P100 engine. Well, do you want to mention uh, what the difference is between a, uh, a turbofan and a regular, regular axial flow engine? Turbofan? Now you're getting more technical. Okay. <laughs> Well, the turbofan's got a lot of bypass. A lot of bypass. Like an airliner. Yes. Like the airliner. Engine. Similar to an airliner. A lot of bypass. So from over here, you're going to get a good view of the uh, the swing wing uh, of the airplane. Uh, as you can maybe see, there's a big joint up there, and the wings could fold out almost straight out, right? Go to 16 degrees, from 16 degrees, which you use for takeoff all the way back to 72 degrees. The wing sweep uh, with the wings fully out is about 63 feet. And with the wings all the way back at 72 degrees, it's roughly 32 feet. And how fast could you go with the wings swept? With the wings all the way back and at the right altitude. I've had an A model up to Mach 2.6. Hold on, I'm being told we got sound issues again here. Hold on. Okay, that should help, I think. We'll see. Uh, so say that again. Uh, what's, what speeds were you at with the... Okay, the max, max speed at high altitude is about 2 point, Mach 2.5. Okay. And it will go uh, supersonic at low level. The limiting factor at low level being the airplane would overheat. Okay. So you're limited really to about 1.2 to 1.5 at low level. Well, what does the uh, the UH and the AF68009 stand for? Okay, UH, it was at Upper Hayford in, in the United Kingdom. And 68 is the contract year that the airplane was built. Okay. And then 009 is the Good. Well, we've, we've talked about that before, so some of the folks are going to know about it. we got one other thing up here in the top. 
Now we have talked about these little uh, the little spikes on the tail that did not come with the airplane. Uh, we put those on here as uh, bird mitigation, but why is the top of the tail painted red? Well, we painted them by squadrons. I was in the 77th Attack Fighter Squadron at Upper Hayford, and we had red tails. We, we had red. 55th Squadron had uh, blue, and 79th had yellow. Oh, okay. And so, uh, the big round things here in the back, these are the afterburners, right? right. Or afterburner cans. Right. Now, we've had to make these here, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Okay. These are made out of sheet metal. They're a pretty good job. Now, what is that? There's this strange looking protuberance here on a This on is the tail. fuel dump. Fuel dump. Now, I've seen some uh, some videos of uh, airplanes, uh, of F-111s uh, with flames shooting out the back of them. What is that? The Australians love to dump fuel and light it. Oh, so they were lighting it right they off of the dump, afterburner. They called it dump and burn. Okay, dump and burn. And uh, you can put out about 5,000 pounds of fuel a minute Wow. Uh, through the dump mass. And of course, the fuel comes out and your afterburners would set it on fire and give you about a 300-foot uh, torch. There's something else underneath here. Now, we've talked about this with other airplanes, but this airplane's got a tail hook, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Now, that that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the, the Navy was considering this airplane for a while, too, right? This is well, more all for... Air, all Air Force aircraft have a tail hook, well, the fighters. Okay. Now, the thing you see down there is a, is a bumper. Oh, okay. To keep your, oh, that is, okay. To keep the okay. tail from the oh, afterburners so that, from contacting the runway. So the big green thing here is the tail hook? Is, uh, so this has got a bumper and a tail hook. Right. Okay, so this long green tail thing here. hooks up in here. Ah, okay, okay, very good. And what are these uh, these things on the bottom of the fuselage that are sticking out? These long straight things. Those are just uh, strikes to make up for aer aerodynamic deficiencies in the airplane. Okay. It it wallowed back and forth. The nose would go from side to side. Put the strikes on. And, okay. Uh, Look straight. Well, we've got a pretty good audience here right now. We've got 61 people. Does anybody have any questions for Jack? Because we're here and we've got a few more minutes. Now, we've got the, the F-111 is sitting right next to our F-14. And that's a swing-wing airplane. That's but right. The 111 was first, though, wasn't it? 111 was first. And the F-14, when it first came out, also had afterburning TF-30s. Oh, it did? Okay. But they were smart enough to get rid of them pretty quickly because it just, if you were at idle power and try to go to afterburner, it could take eight to ten seconds. Wow. That's a long time. Which wasn't acceptable in a, in a pattern for landing on an aircraft carrier. So what, the, tell me, what would your normal mission be like that you would go out on with this airplane? Go out? We'd usually, a training mission in the States take off, go out, go into an FAA-approved low-level route. We normally, in the States, for training missions, flew at 500 feet. The aircraft is capable of going down to 200 feet on the automatic train following. We fly the route at 480 knots, was our, was okay. our standard. And then when you hit your initial point for the target, you'd increase the speed to 540 knots and go in and make a radar delivery on the target. And then we, depending on the range, we'd try and, and do some visual deliveries also. Okay, we've got Mike James here so asking about the terrain following navigation. Tell us about that. How low could you go and it be on autopilot? 200 feet. 200 feet, at how fast? Uh, 540, you could go pretty much as fast as you want. Now, is that going to follow the nape of the earth? It's yes. going to just uh, wherever you're at. Right. Okay. And so that was the normal was 200 feet? Uh, that was the lowest. The lowest. Go. Our okay. normal training was at 500. Okay. Just to stay away from it. And let's see, I think we, I'm not certain we mentioned this, but uh, 563 of these were built here in Fort Worth. 563. With General Dynamics. And the, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention with the swing wing, and we talked about the 111 being the first, 
and the F-14 also being one, but the Russians built at least four or five different models of swing-wing airplanes. Right. They, the first one they built was, the, I believe, the MiG-23, which, if you look at a picture of it, looks like an awful lot like a 111. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit shorter. And it has one engine. Uh, was there hard and soft rides in the uh, TFR? There's hard, medium, and soft. Hard was really not usable because it would shove over at zero degrees and it made it really difficult for the weapons officer to operate and to have his head in the radar scope because you'd go from a, a zero G pushover to a three G pull. Wow. So and soft it floated too much. So we flew about ninety five percent of the time using medium rides. Okay, uh, we've got another question here from uh, uh, Mike Lafferty. Uh, the ejection pot, have you ever used it? Thank God, no. Yeah, I know, load books don't have a place for, uh, for ejection. Yeah, my takeoff equal my lane. There you go. Okay, we've got a couple of things here we want to talk about just briefly. Number one, on the right-hand side, you'll notice the historic Fort Worth Incorporated Preservation Award winner. Uh, a few years ago now, because of the preservation efforts that went into this airplane, uh, and, and you really can't appreciate what it looks now, looks like now, unless you saw it when we got it. It was literally came to us in boxes. It took us close to uh, seven or eight years uh, to put it back into shape. Uh, we had to manufacture some pieces. We had to find and scrounge pieces. And then we got it back together and we were recognized by Historic Fort Worth during their annual preservation awards uh, for this airplane and the, and the work that was done here. And uh, let's see, we've got some other names here on the uh, on the landing gear door on, on here. We know who you are, but yeah. uh, what's CC and uh, what's the MSG Chief, Hank Wright? Crew Chief is uh, Master Sergeant Hank Wright. Hank was with the 111 for a long time. It's mostly at Keelan Air Force Base. Okay. And then Hank lives in this area and spent hundreds of hours uh, helping to restore this. Um, fortunately, Hank had had a lot of these pieces off and back on so he knew how to he knew how to get the flaps and slaps back on the wings and little critical things like that. Without Hank we probably couldn't have gotten the, gotten the wings reassembled. Well and we had some help from some of the B thirty six peacemaker guys too. I remember Buster Cleveland when we were getting That's the wings true. on. Right. And so some of these guys had worked on it at uh, General Dynamics. Of course a lot of our B thirty six museum members worked at General Dynamics and a lot of them worked on the airplane. And so they helped us not only uh, financially, which they certainly helped with, but like Jim said, they also knew a lot about the airplane and how to put it back together. One thing we did skip over was the, was the uh, weapons bay. Oh, bay. right, okay, talk about that a little bit. It's in the center of the aircraft in between the speed brake and the nose gear. Okay. And it was, uh, it was capable of holding two uh, nuclear weapons. And uh, when we were sitting, sitting alert in Europe, uh, that's when it, it had two, two weapons in the bomb bag. And it's also uh, capable of holding the 20 millimeter uh, Gatling gun. Okay. Did you ever use that? Uh, I never got to fire it. Okay. It wasn't used very much. It really uh, wasn't practical. The really neat thing about the gun is it held 2,100 rounds of 20 millimeters. So oh, and we've got one of the drums from there. We, have, yeah. we have an ammo drum, and it fit on the right hand uh, door. It, it replaced the right-hand door of the bomb. Well, we are, Jack, I appreciate you being out here this morning to do this. Uh, we're still not open. We're still being uh, as safe as we can and still bringing you these, uh, these episodes so you get an opportunity to see some of the airplanes close up. Uh, we have a model contest that's going on online right now. We're doing a, a daily aviation art uh, presentation. Uh, we've got some other online uh, activities for people, and if you go to our website under the resources, uh, you can find some uh, some things on paper airplanes, flight dynamics, uh, some STEM activities for uh, for young people, coloring pages, and lots more videos. Uh, we also have the videos on our uh, YouTube channel, so uh, we encourage you to uh, to take 
uh, take advantage of all of this stuff and uh, let us know what you think of it give us a uh, uh, give us a thumbs up on uh, on facebook or send us a note uh, because we're doing this uh, to help you learn something about uh, what's taking place here in, the, in north texas in terms of aviation and just uh, about our collection in general uh, we have uh, 29 warbirds here and uh, we look forward to uh, doing this for you again next wednesday again uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays at noon, we're going to do these walk-arounds. Uh, and uh, if you've got a particular airplane that you'd like this week, let me know. Uh, I'm thinking about the F-5, thinking about the F-4, maybe the A-4. So uh, let me know what you'd like us to see, and uh, we'll be back with you on Wednesday. So for now, uh, be safe, be well, and uh, we will see you later in the week. Thank you.